Hello and in today's STM32 programming we are going to be using a timer so for this particular timer we are going to be using timer 3 so you get your timers in the timer section and TMI3 is timer 3. Now to enable the timer you have to click internal clock source have that ticked and then we are going to set up this timer to tick at a one millisecond interval or actually a one microsecond interval so you need to set your prescaler to 72 minus one so how do i get the 72 number we go to our clock configuration then we can see here uh, at ab1 timer clocks and then you get the timer clock in megahertz so 72 megahertz for a timer clock so that will give us a prescaler that divides by 72 minus one which will give us a one megahertz clock so each tick will be one microsecond microsecond and then we set our counting period as 1000 this will be more for interrupts but for every 1000 ticks will be one millisecond and we then we don't need to divide the internal clock so if you need an even lower speed or you have such a high speed clock you can also divide the clock here by additional two three or four auto reload you're going to keep that as disabled trigger event selection is reset we keep that as default and master slave mode we keep as default as well so that's all we require to set up a timer we just save switch our perspective now since i have regenerated my project i need to change the fallback settings so the uart needs to be one and the adc needs to be one as well now that we have generated a timer project it will generate the tim.h file and the tim.c file but we are not going to use this much the only function we are going to use here is mxtim3 init and then the handle for timer3 and we can have a look at the c main file all that you see here is it has added the timer3 initialization here next we create a header file so tmi underscore hole h just copy that create a new source file dot cpp then we can move our header file over here so now we create a class that is timer base we give it public member protected members and private members as well so this is going to be a fairly basic constructor as per our usual defaults we give it the handle and the instance just for continuity i just want to check if they're all the same instance then handle and our ur h is instance then handle okay so our tma hole needs to swap around and then we also create our destructor and our protected variable is going to be a handle to our timer dev type star underscore handle timer so now we need to create our timer constructor and we need to hash include tim.h which is one of the new files that got generated to add our front piece here and that we also need to create a instance def i don't believe we are going to use the instance much but it's an available resource then we need to initialize our timer so we can find that if we go to our dot h go to the declaration of the dot c file then we can see them all base in it we can see here a bunch of additional functions pwm the one we want is the timer stuff ah here we go so the whole timer base stuff start and the whole timer base stops what we're interested in if we want to start and stop but we first need to initialize our timer so we create a private function which is void and we just say init and the take void parameters so we just create that function we say if underscore instance is equivalent to tim3 and tmi3 is found in the stm32f103xb.com h file you can actually find all the primary registers here plus their offset then we need to define the number of timers that we have so we say hash define tim underscore count and the number of timers that are available us to us is four we create a 
static bool and we say is underscore init and that is going to be an array and that array is going to be of size timer count. We also need to declare it in our C file and our C file needs to hash include im underscore all dot h and we say if or is in it of index two since we're using timer three we minus one and gives us the is in it index is true we simply just return if it is not in it we say it's equivalent to true and then we look at our timer.h file so we can just quickly copy our init function from there and that will initialize our function and then we say return so that's our timer initialized then we can create a destructor and our destructor is going to be if it is timer three say is in it of index two is equals false then we go look at our timer.c then we can see the whole timer base msp in it and then we can see whole timer base d in it so we copy this function it is declared in the I believe the whole file for the timer let's just see, have a look see here not declared over here let's see which the dot h file this is in it is in the uh, timer hole file okay so it's already in a header file for us so we just copy the deinitialization function and then we go to our destructor and we pass in our handle there now in our constructor we need to set the instance and the handle and then in our constructor we call the init function so that initializes the timer for us then we need to start our timer so void start void and we have to double check in our .h file base in net actually there's the start so that returns a all def and we also need a stop function and that's going to be void as well so we copy these two functions go back to our cp after our destructor after our init we paste the two functions in just to keep for reference and we simply just call start create the stub and stop and we create the stub as well there uh, simply what we do is we copy the start function into start and that returns a value for us and then we need to give it the handle and we do exactly the same with the stop function and for future i'm going to make these two virtual functions so that i can override them if needs be and then we make another virtual function which is read that allows us to read the current time so now for the read function it's going to be void and it's going to be i believe a uint 32 that it returns so let's go look in the handle def if we look at the handle def we have the instance type def or a timer we go look at what's contained in there and this is all the registers associated with the timer and you can see here that the c nt register is associated with the count register so you can change these things on the fly for your timer if you really need to so we just copy that comment and paste in the cnt so we create the read function and we need to add the class name to it as well then we take our whole and we say that is to our instance variable contained in the structure and our instance variable needs to be the count of the variable and simply all we do is return so i'm going to go on a small tangent here if you go to your timer setup you can determine the size of your timer when you enable so the default value here determines how many bits your timer is uh, if i remember correctly this is a 16 bit timer it will be the same for timer 3 if you want to enable timer like timer 2 you say internal clock at the clock source so this is also a 16 bit timer plus one internal clock also a 16 bit timer but this will determine the width the maximum value you can put here in your counter peripheral yeah. we don't save there guess we want to switch our perspective again so now we are returning the microseconds and apparently it closed my timer hole dot h i'm actually not going to make that virtual but there's another function that we can create so we have our read and then we have another virtual function which is going 
going to be void and that's going to be reset so this is going to set our timer back to zero and that's also going to return a void value so instead of returning the count it will reset the counter back to zero and that's going to be void and that's also going to be timer base so let's have it a compile and see what it does okay it's complaining about it's not a static member okay let's just see here oh i forgot to put static there excellent now we are building then we have our main.cpp uh, now we can create the timer base uh, it's going to timer three and uh, now we need to pass it the instance which is going to be tim3 and then we go look in our timer.h file to get our handle we get it from there and then we need to reference it and we also need to hash include our timer all file let's just see if everything builds nicely still no warnings great stuff now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a incrementing counter we can have a adjustable delay which is fantastic it's going to temporarily comment out everything in our while one loop we say un32 the un32 here we say tick underscore us we say now previous and that is going to be zero and underneath that we create another variable and we say tick now okay then we also need to start our timer so we take our timei3 and we say dot start and we say if I'm tick us now is insert minus tick previous is greater than let's say 1000 another thousand so 1 million microseconds so that will be one second let's just see if that builds okay it's just complaining about unused variables you say tick us now we declare it up here and we say timer 3 dot read and simply when we have our if we say tick previous is equals to tick us now so we do that immediately after we enter the if actually is greater or equals to let me just check something so i have an idea one million and I believe I'm correct. 1 million exceeds a 16 bit integer, or does it not? Yes, it does exceed the 16 bit integer. It would only be the lower row. So that's the issue we're sitting with here. Let me just have a bit of a calculation here. I'll be back when I'm done with it. Okay, so I've redone some of the calculations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the tick right down to 1 millisecond ticks. So we go to our configurator. Now I used a solver calculator for this. But what we are going to do is we're going to divide the clock by four and then we are going to make our prescaler 250 make every tick one millisecond long so every time the counter increments will be one millisecond now so we say save we regenerate yes okay since we regenerated i'm just going to quickly go over this so we take this division by four which we will be our clock configuration our clock configuration for a timer so it's 72 divided by four and then we we divide the prescaler by additional 250 minus one and that will give us a one millisecond tick on this timer uh, the counter period is not that important here so we can actually make that fff which is doesn't work so we switch it to hexadecimal and we make that fff so that will be the maximum another way you can check for the maximum is by just putting in a stupid large number in here and it will fix it for you so we just quickly save this say yes now we just need to because we regenerated we have to go to a whole config again and we say one and one uh, we delete our c main and then we can continue here so we can reduce this now by a thousand and then we can quickly run it for a bunch of warnings because we're not using variables actually i can put these back and just say actually no i cannot what we can do is we can go here ah, no, let's not do that just comment this out actually debug it we switch to the debug perspective okay then we start the whole display that it doesn't work uh, let's see variables obviously timer three is not running let's just see what's in the start uh start let's see it's this instance count count is staying at zero it means the timer has not started okay here we go let's reset continue okay we got our init i uh, not want to step over 
servers so we just rerun the into instance is tmi3 and what is underscore instance currently instance is zero 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 okay just check my main.c you are part one go okay. reset at the init function our instance is the correct one i believe let's just see here and what is our underscore instance it's interesting just double check in my adc code init instance adc3 and it's also passed in oh i don't construct it i wonder just rebuild okay play uh, init step into step into great stuff we started the instance count okay just make that into a version and then we see what it does don't care about that anymore let's see our local variables okay that looks that looks to be correct take this for loop take our bus so this is going to be our led bus we are just going to increment it by one for a u int eight we just copy this now we make this up here and we say uh, ticker and that's going to be equals to zero and our ticker is going to increment by one so once a second it's going to increment and then we take our ticker into the led and then we stop our debug session and we flash the stm32 and i am not seeing a single thing on the stm32 so debug time again switch to the debug perspective we can actually get rid of the dot h file actually and be there so ticker is one currently actually we need to make it down here i'm bugging through the last breakpoint this breakpoint okay so that should be the leds off there, yes okay so what i'm seeing on the board is so currently the ticker is set to two and i think okay so i'm going to run one more time so it should be three but you can see it doesn't increment here and it's a loose resistor if i set the code once more that's four five six and so on if i let the code run apparently it does not work that's a lot faster than one second either i computed my clocks incorrectly which is likely let's just see here so apparently i computed it completely wrong so let's have a look at mine again this will be how many Eighteen thousand. prescaler switch again regenerate project delete the main.c file redo our configs and let's flash the stm32 and see what happens as you can see absolutely nothing is happening let's start debugging again now the question is does this thing even tick you say us now that's fascinating if i step the code it seems to be working if i let it run now it suddenly works so it looks like it failed to flash the code which is fascinating now we have a led ticker now what we want to do is we want to make a variable delay go back to the code so we need a adc input uh, we are going to read channel one and so channel one can be up to i believe 1000 actually 4000 so it can be all the way to up to four seconds so we can have a, a zero to four second delay or 4096 delay let me just double check if it's actually working okay let's try again let's just see what the error is oops it needs to be this line save we build and we flash it now if we switch to cam you can see the led is running unfortunately the camera doesn't do it just as because of the refresh rate but if I change, actually, I change this one. Nope, it's not that one. Might be this one. Change that all the way up. Now you can see it slowly increments. And when I adjust it up, you can slowly see the, the camera is really not doing justice to this. You can slowly see how it starts blinking faster and counting up in binary faster as you go eventually at zero delay so it's basically infinitum we add a bit of delay and we add a lot of delay and then we have a basically a adjustable delay on a blinky led so the last thing i want to add is just something to display the ticker print we are going to change this part to a print uh, print buffer so, yeah and we take our snn print f and then we're going to say another variable and that's going to be tick print and this is no longer us this is ms all of them we just change that we say print and we effectively duplicate this if 
and simply we say here tick r so we're going to move the sticker in here so it's in front f sticker and we are going to say uh ticker and that's going to be a percentage d and then simply we write to the keyword buffer actually we can put the plus plus there and that's end of that and now we have a ticker counter that's my bad i need to change that one adc buffer was not declared uh, so okay we hit this that's a print buffer. We build again. One and one. Zero errors. And then we just simply crash code. Now, did it crash? Looks like it crashed. Um, let's see. Maybe we should clear the print buffer before we attempt to write anything onto it. So let's try that. I know what the issue is. I did not do this for this one. It won't help much with this. What we actually need to do is use this variable over here. And that's it. Now we should have a different one once a second and an adjustable ADC running in parallel. That's interesting. You can see on the top left the ticker already running. And look at the board itself. You're ticking away. And if I adjust the bot over here so that we tick faster, you can see it also. Ah, it's actually affecting the ticker. As you can see, it runs a lot faster. So let's quickly go fix that bug. I want that as once a second. So let's quickly just flash that onto the STM. Well, that looks to be running a lot faster than one second. Let's just see. Is it still attached to that? No, it looks like half a second to me that it's ticking at. Let me just see here. I've adjusted the tick counter to two now. See if I make that four if I once a second. Look at main. I brought in putty here. Let's just get these two above each other. That looks like approximately a second. So I am out by factor of four. Let's just see the timer all over here. I have it divided by four. So what would happen if I times this by four? Now we're going to do this entire schlep again. Please just flash here. Hopefully we don't overflow. I most likely have overflowed the timer since look here, absolutely nothing happening. Or we got this weird thing again that it doesn't want to run unless it's in debug mode let's see oh this is what happened i forgot to delete the main.c okay so we delete our debug and we say flash and that still looks incredibly fast on the tick right to me i divide by four let's just see if i take eighteen thousand. okay so that still doesn't exceed that minus one i know what i did wrong order of operations instead of this number i was multiplying one by four genius four times Okay, and you don't like that number, do you? Let's just control C. Let's just see, will this overflow? Times four. That will most definitely overflow. So it's not possible to do a one millisecond tick with the timer. So what I'm going to do is next I'm going to use a interrupt on the timer for the next video. So that's a basic introduction to using the timer on a STM32 without an interrupt. A like, share, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.